In our previous video, we introduced the topic of capacitors and we talked about how capacitors behave when they charge up in simple circuits. And in this video, I want to do something similar, but instead we're going to look at how capacitors behave when they discharge. And to illustrate that, I've got this simple circuit here, which contains a capacitor on the left hand side here, a switch and a resistor. And what I want to imagine is that this capacitor has already been charged up. So this capacitor is fully charged. And when we close the switch, a complete circuit is formed and this capacitor is going to discharge. Just like in our previous video, we're going to measure how the capacitor discharges by measuring the voltage across the capacitor. So we imagine that we're connecting a voltmeter across the capacitor like so. And below I've sketched a graph which is a graph of Vc, the voltage across the capacitor, against time. And what we're going to try and do is try and examine how the capacitor behaves as it discharges. Now in our previous video we talked about how capacitors charge with a growth curve. It's a non-linear shape and we have this sudden increase um, followed by a leveling off as the capacitor approaches being fully charged. And it's the same with a capacitor that's discharging. But rather than a growth curve, we see something called a decay curve, which looks something like this. We have a sudden drop off in the voltage and then a leveling off as we approach um, the capacitor being completely discharged. So this is something called a decay curve. And the decay curve is just another example of a transient in circuits. And we're going to look also at another component called the inductor, which also exhibits a transient behavior similar to this one. But for this video, we're going to focus on this decay curve and what it means for simple circuits like the one we have shown there. And just like in our previous video involving the growth curve, the decay curve can also be expressed as a mathematical formula. And the formula looks something like this. We can say that Vc equals Vs multiplied by E to the power of minus T over tau. Now, just as a reminder of what these terms mean, well, Vc, we know, is the, uh, the voltage across the capacitor. So Vc is the voltage that's going to be decreasing as time elapses. Vs, we can think of as our starting voltage, and that depends on the voltage that the capacitor has been charged to. So if we imagine that this capacitor in our example has been charged to a voltage of 5 volts, then our starting voltage is going to be 5 volts and the voltage VC will just drop off from there on as the switch is closed and current can flow around the circuit. So VS is our starting voltage. E represents the exponential function, which we talked about in our previous video. T represents time, the time that's elapsing. And tau was a term that we talked about in our previous video for the time constant. And just as a reminder, tau equals R times C in the case of a circuit like this, uh, which contains a capacitor and a resistor. We multiply the resistance and the capacitance together to get the time constant. So let's try a quick example question. And let's say for our question, um, we're to calculate the voltage VC at 20 seconds. So we're going to allow 20 seconds to elapse and then we're going to calculate the voltage at that point. And for the purposes of our example, let's say that Vs is 5 volts. So our capacitor is charged initially to a voltage of 5 volts. And we know that as time elapses, that voltage is going to decrease and tend towards zero in that decay curve pattern. But we know at 20 seconds, that voltage will be somewhere between 5 and zero. 
So to attempt this question, the first thing we have to do is work out the time constant in this circuit. And we said that tau, the time constant, is equal to r times c. r in this case is a 120 ohm resistor. So it's 120 multiplied by c, the capacitance, which in this case is 390 millifarads. Now, if we're using um, our units correctly, we need to say that's 390 times 10 to the minus 3 for millifarads. And if we calculate that, I get an answer of 46.8 seconds. Remembering that the time constant is a time that's measured in seconds. So now that we know this, we can have a think about our question. What is VC at 20 seconds? And to do that, we need to use our decay curve formula that we looked at on the previous slide there. And we know that VC equals VS times E to the power minus T over tau. So let's put some numbers into our equation because we know that VS is 5 volts. That's our initial starting voltage. Multiplied by E, the power of minus T over tau. So T, we've said, is going to be 20 seconds. That's the time we want to evaluate this circuit at. So minus 20 over tau, and we've just said there on the left-hand side, the tau is 46.8. And when we evaluate that, uh, or calculate it in a calculator, I get an answer of 3.26 volts. If you're happy using the decay curve formula there, let's have a look at a more complicated question. So the question is written out here. Uh, it says, an unknown capacitor is charged to a voltage of 20 volts. It is then discharged through a 6.8 mega ohm resistor, that capital M for mega ohms there. It takes 30 seconds for the voltage to drop by 50%. And then it asks us to calculate three things. First of all, uh, the time constant of the circuit, the capacitance of the capacitor, and then finally the time taken for the voltage to drop to 25% of its starting voltage. It may help to begin with just to visualise this circuit with a quick sketch there. And we only know a few things from the wording of the question. Firstly, we know that our resistor is a 6.8 mega ohm resistor. But the capacitor has an unknown value. We don't know the value of the capacitance there. But we know that Vs, the starting voltage, is 20 volts. So our capacitor has been charged to a voltage of 20 volts. And then as the switch closes and this capacitor is allowed to discharge, that voltage across the capacitor VC is going to start at 20 and it's going to decrease all the way down to zero in that decay curve. Let's write a few other things that we know as well. So first of all, um, we, we know, just to repeat myself, that VS is 20 volts. And we were also told that it takes 30 seconds for the voltage to drop by 50%. Now, if we're measuring VC across the capacitor, that means that if the uh, capacitor is discharged by 50%, the voltage across it will have gone down by 50% as well. So at this point, VC is going to be equal to 10 volts. And we know that that is at a time of 30 seconds. So this is the information that we've been given. And the first thing it asks us to do is to calculate the time constant. Now we know that the, the formula for the time constant is T equals R times C. But we run into a problem because though we know what R is, in this case 6.8 mega ohms, we don't know what C is in the circuit. And so we can't use this formula to work out the time constant. And we're going to have to find another way. To do this, let's return to our decay curve formula. So this is the formula that we uh, wrote on the last slide there. And in this case, tau is the unknown. Question A asks us to work out the time constant tau. But everything else in this circuit, we do know. 
because we said on the previous slide that Vs was 20, uh, 20 volts. We said that Vc was 10 volts at a time of 30 seconds. So what we need to do is we need to rearrange this growth curve formula to make tau the subject. And there are a few steps to do that. First of all, let's divide both sides of this formula by Vs. And so what happens is we're going to lose Vs off of one side and we're going to divide by Vs on the other side as well. And so we get something that looks like this. Once I've done that, I need to, make, uh, to take logarithms of both sides. In our last video, we talked about the use of the natural logarithm. And we're going to do something similar here as well. So we'll end up with something that looks like this. Um, if I swap the sort of sides of the formula to put E on the left-hand side, we can see that the natural logarithm, ln, of E to the minus T over tau is equal to the natural logarithm of Vc over Vs. So all I've done, other than swapping the sides around there, is I've put a natural logarithm uh, on both sides there. And we said that the natural logarithm and the exponential are kind of like opposites. They kind of cancel each other out and just leave us with whatever was the power. And so on the left-hand side there, what we're going to end up with, rather than the natural logarithm of the exponential to the power of minus t over tau, that all comes down to minus t over tau. And on the right-hand side, we're still left with that logarithm, the logarithm of Vc over Vs. Now remember that tau is the unknown in this equation. That's, that's what we're trying to find. So we want to get tau by itself there. And at the minute, we have uh, minus t divided by tau gives us this logarithm. And so we can rearrange that um, to say that tau equals minus t over the logarithm. So we end up with something that looks like this, minus t over the logarithm of vc over vs. Now that we've rearranged this formula, we can put in some values. Uh, we can say that uh, minus t is the same as uh, minus 30 in this case over the logarithm or the natural logarithm of Vc over Vs. Well, we said that Vc was 10 volts over Vs, which we said was 20 volts. And so that's our final formula there. And if we calculate that, uh, I get an answer of 43.28 seconds. Question B was to calculate the capacitance of the capacitor in the circuit. And so now I want to return to that formula that we discarded earlier of tau equals R times C. But we're not going to use it to calculate tau because tau we've just calculated in part A by using logarithms there. But rather the unknown in this circuit is C. And so I'm going to rearrange this equation now to form uh, C as being the subject. So that will be C equals tau over R. And we know what tau is. We've just calculated it. We said that tau was 43.28 divided by R. And R, if you remember, was a 6.8 mega ohm resistor. Now, mega being a standard prefix for 10 to the 6 or a million. So R, I would say, is 6.8 times 10 to the 6. And if I calculate that, I get an answer of 6.36 times 10 to the minus 6. And minus 10 to the minus 6 is a standard prefix for micro. And it's a capacitor, so it's measured in farad. So I can express this as 6.36 times 10 to the minus 6 farads. Or better yet, I could say 6.36 microfarads.
the last part of this question, uh, question C, if you remember, was to calculate the time it would take for VC to drop to 25% of its starting voltage. And we said that the starting voltage was 20 volts. So just in terms of voltage, if our capacitor has discharged and it's only 25% uh, of its full charge, then I would expect the voltage across the capacitor to have decreased to 25% of its starting voltage as well. So we're looking for an instance where VC has dropped to just 5 volts because that's 25% of our starting voltage there. And the question is, what time will that take? Well, VC is equal to VS times E to the power minus T over tau. And now in this case, it's T that we want to find in this question. And so once again, we need to use logarithms to rearrange this equation to make T the subject. So let's do that again. And we will apply the same method as we did last time because we said that VC over VS is equal to E to the power minus T over tau. So VC over VS equals E to the power minus T over tau. We just divided both sides by VS as before. And we used the natural logarithm on both sides to get our result of um, minus T over tau equals ln vc over vs. That's just the same uh, maths as we did a couple of slides back there. But before, we were looking to find tau. And in this case, we don't want to find tau, we want to find minus t. And so to do that, I want to multiply both sides by tau. So if I multiply the left-hand side by tau, which was t divided by tau, tau just disappears. And if I multiply the right-hand side by tau, I get tau appearing on the right-hand side like so. The only difference is I've got minus t on the left-hand side. I would rather t be the subject by itself and the minus be on the other side. So if I change the signs on both sides of the equation, I get my final formula. t equals minus the logarithm, the natural logarithm, of vc over vs multiplied by tau. The final thing I can do is to plug some values into that equation because we know that VC is 5 volts, so that, that's what we're expecting when it's a 25% charge, and VS is uh, 20 volts, and we also calculated tau on the um, previous slides as well. So we can say that minus the natural logarithm of 5 over 20 multiplied by the time constant, which we said was 43.28. That gives me a final answer of 60.0 seconds. I hope you found this video useful on how capacitors behave when they discharge. First of all, by considering the shape of the decay curve as capacitors discharge, and then using the decay curve formula calculate voltages as capacitors discharge.